I believe that using nutrition to solve the lipid problem is not a good solution. I think use nutrition to solve the nutrition problem. So I want to respond to this clip uh, by Peter Atia. The first thing I'll say is obviously this is a nine second clip taken out of context of the more complete discussion, which you're free to watch. Um, but I do think it's fair to respond to this clip uh, in particular for a few reasons. One, it's a very direct and explicit comment that I think is pretty self-contained. Two, lipidologists are circulating this nine second clip, that's where I got it, trying to make the point he just made, again, as an isolated statement. And three, because I provide further context in other videos where I, you know, I think do go into a lot of nuance on my thoughts in response to Peter Atia, specifically his comments with respect to LDL cholesterol in the uh, context of the nutrition problem or ketogenic diets, um, if you will, even if that's not maybe what he's referring to exactly here. But now I, I want to respond to what he says here with three big points. Um, the first has to do um, with the changing landscape of atherosclerosis, as it was put in a uh, Nature Reviews article. So the lipid problem r relates to cardiovascular risk, high um, atherogenic lipoproteins promoting um, atherosclerosis. And um, what we actually know is that despite innovations in pharmacotherapy targeting the necessary um, LDL particles or ApoB particles, mortality rates aren't getting that much better. Now, you don't have to take it from me, a 20-something medical student PhD, you can take it from the horse's mouth. In this case, um, Professor Peter Libby at Harvard, who has a beautiful review in um, out of Nature Press. It was published in 2021. It's entitled The Changing Lane, The Changing Landscape of Atherosclerosis. I'll read a couple sections from it because I think it's very well written. Bearing in mind, this isn't a, a, like a pro-keto, you know, fringe article in any sense. This is from a very, you know, uh, conventional institution or res by a respected professional. So, you know, you can read it and I think it's something that everybody can get something from. But anyway, here are some sections for you to consider. Um, it reads, rather than elevated LDL cholesterol and elevation in triglyceride rich lipoproteins, so high triglycerides and low HDL now comprises the major pattern of lipid abnormality in many patients who are treated for ASCBD. Highly effective, now inexpensive therapies for lowering LDL, statins, azetamide, PCSK9, etc., have contributed to an overall drop in LDL, whereas obesity, its attendant insulin resistance, and a high carbohydrate diet favor a rise in the prevalence of the cluster of conditions referred to as metabolic syndrome, which is characterized in part by elevated levels of triglyceride rich lipoproteins. And later on, it says, despite effective intervention. So this is pharmacotherapy, drugs like statins, azetamide, PCSK9. For the control of LDL, blood pressure and other traditional risk factors, those related to diet, um, are a considerable residual risk um, that remains for ASCVD. For example, recent clinical trials of novel cardiovascular agents performed in subjects optimally treated, optimally treated, with standard of care background therapy found that 1 in 20 will have recurrent ischemic events in the year after acute coronary syndrome. 1 in 10 individuals who survive an acute myocardial infarction, a heart attack, in the United States will require readmission within one month at considerable personal and societal cost. Moreover, in addition to obesity and its associated insulin resistance, rises in air pollution transitions from traditional diets towards those that may aggravate cardiovascular risk, the nutrition problem, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can kind of see the point. The idea is that you can't separate nutrition from the lipid problem and the cardiovascular problem. If you try to do that, you know, you can target necessary and causal elements of the cascade, namely ApoB, LDL, but you will be left with residual risk and you will not fully resolve the problem. So no, I disagree completely and I think you do need to address nutrition with respect to the lipid problem. Now, the chosen phrasing I thought was interesting. Nutrition to solve the lipid problem doesn't make sense. Use nutrition to solve the nutrition problem. You can see the play on words there. I can look at this through a different lens as well and suggest that the lipid problem actually requires nutritional context. Is the same lipid problem, i.e. the same level of LDL, ApoB, the same problem in different nutritional and metabolic contexts? That's the big question we're asking now 
with study of lean mass hyperresponders who have dramatically elevated LDL cholesterol and ApoB, but in the context of otherwise good metabolic health, um, and in a carbohydrate restriction-induced phenotype as opposed to something that's genetic like FH. And, you know, based on the preliminary data, which was um, released on December 8th of uh, this year, 2023, you know, on first look, it seems possible that elevated LDL in this population doesn't confer the same risk as might be expected by similar levels in other conditions, namely FH, or if somebody else is metabolically unhealthy. So it remains a question. Is the lipid problem informed by nutritional context? And if you treat the nutrition problem, i.e. you treat bad nutrition, bad metabolic health, does the lipid problem take on different, possibly lesser relevance? I think that's an open question. Also, trying to cast lipids, and this is more of an aside, um, and nutrition is exclusive by a play on words, is kind of interesting because a lot of nutrition is actually lipids. We eat a lot of lipids, so I'm just gonna put that out there. Um, and the final point that I have to ask is, but what if nutrition is just more effective than pharmacotherapy? Actually, it's very ironic that this clip ended up on my timeline the same day that I complete my five-month Oreo versus statin trial. And you might not know, but I now know which is more effective, the Oreo or the statin. So, you know, context matters. Individual patient cases are individual patient cases, and I'm definitely not going to claim Oreo cookies are healthy. No one's claiming that. Um, nor that, you know, nutritional manipulation will be more effective um, than, say, statin therapy or PCS canine in all patients. But we do have reason to believe in, in certain subsets, namely lean mass hyperresponders, addressing nutrition will have a more dramatic impact than um, medications. Now, I do want to do a proper uh, crossover trial on this, but we already have other data from cohort studies and an interventional trial showing that nutritional manipulation can have a dramatic effect on LDL cholesterol. The highest I've seen is a drop in LDL of uh, 480 milligrams per deciliter and relative drops upwards of 70% in LDL, which is much more effective um, than, you know, uh, average statin therapy. So, you know, this is all food for thought. Peter is very welcome to reply to my reply or reach out to me to have a, a longer form discussion. I do think it will be a productive discussion that um, all of uh, his audience and my much smaller audience would enjoy. I think we could come together on a lot of things. Balls in his court.